bid you welcome. And today I have another topic of interest and importance to humanity upon the earth at this time. And although it has a great deal to do with the earth at this time, it is in the realms that you would associate heaven with that our topic will take us today. And so to relieve you from the immense suspense you must have by now, I say to you that the subject for today's exploration is all about angels, angelic beings, so that you will understand what they are and what is the role that they play with humanity, and particularly at this time. Angels, then, well, they are luminous beings. You see? Now, a being is something that is. A being is the ultimate essence, the essential being. And so you, as a human being, the human part is associated with your beingness. And so as you are expressing yourself now, you are expressing yourself as a human being. It is not what you are. You are indeed a soul and a luminous being at that. But your current expression, how you have dressed yourself, is in the wardrobe or the density, best put, of a human being. It is your current expression. So an angel or an angelic being is a luminous essential, the essence of all that is. Essence is that which is pure, that cannot be reduced or changed to any other thing. It is pure in its purest form. And so angels then are luminous beings expressing themselves in the lightest way possible regarding where humanity is or in the lightest essential way as it pertains to humanity. And this is what humanity has called an angel. Do angels consider themselves angels? Well, in some way. They understand that where humanity is concerned, that is what they are called or that is how they express themselves in and throughout the density of humanity and humanity's history. Now, not all cultures upon the earth believe in angels. There are some, in fact, that do not. And yet, they also have corresponding divinities associated. So what some cultures may call a divinity or an essential or luminous being or even an altered being from another world is what some other cultures may call an angel. So here to make a distinction, we may even say that what one culture in your history may have thought of as an extraterrestrial being one from another world, another culture may very well call an angel. So in our terminology then, it is important to have that reflection because a being of light, a luminous being of light, can express itself in a variety of different densities and in several different dimensions. Each of these would produce a different effect. It is not very different than for you to consider that if you were to express yourself in winter's clothing, you would have one appearance, and in summer's clothing, altogether different as well. Or if you were to dress for one culture or another, one event or another, that you would express yourself, perhaps even speak in different tones or language, completely differently. Likewise, if you speak more than one language, that would allow you to express yourself differently as well. Using then that same metaphor, angels appear in many different ways, under many different guises, under much altered or luminous light, 
and so they would appear in many different garbs, including that which would appear to be a being from another world altogether. So when we speak of angelic appearance, it is time now for you to begin to, well, expand the conditions by which you would imagine an angel would appear, or what it would look like, or sound like, or speak like, if the moment called for that as well. And so angels then appear again according to the density and the dimension by which they have expressed themselves or by which they have been called upon to express. Do angels have bodies? Not exactly. Their beingness allows for essence. Essence has essence. Essence has luminosity and luminosity can gather in some ways expressing itself as yes conditions that can appear to be physical in their properties however in general angels do not have being bodies they do not have physical bodies they do not have properties associated with physical bodies they do not have longevity in their angel essence bodies. If you were to see an angelic presence, that body would be manifest for you in order not to frighten you or in order to compliment you or in order to give to you everything that you would want and hope to see or to have in that encounter. You see, in many ways, angels would then aim to please, to assist and that would include appearing for you in ways that would be well partial to you and to your liking or to your expectations angelic beings and luminous beings that they are have a way of arranging themselves and always have again using the metaphor of different cultures having different understandings for life then angels do as well. And so they can express themselves and their purpose in a variety of unique and different vital and important ways as the moment or the experience would call for it. Angels have always been available around and near the earth and near humanity. Although angels were not created for humanity or for the earth, imagine that where there is one level of density, in essence its opposite or its counterbalance must exist. If you like, it is one of the universal laws that there is balance regardless of what it will look like. So the more dense your thoughts the more dense your bodies, the lighter and the more exquisite and the more divine angels are. The more that humanity moves up, if you like, in density or in experience and dimensions, the more that that level of balance will make the angels in some ways more equivalent or more like you so that you will also appear as luminous light and would be able to recognize them that much more clearly without needing to see them physically. You see? Again now, the balance is the most important aspect here. So angels or angelic beings have always, always been for the earth and around the earth from the very creation. However, their purpose as associated with humanity, that is something that in many ways you have given them. It is humanity that calls upon angels and of course balance. The laws then say that they respond. Where humanity in density calls upon the light, the light responds where one beingness, a dense being, calls upon something that is lighter, the light responds. And so as long as there is humanity upon the earth, yes, 
there will be angels in a variety of ways and forms available to the earth. For every human being, there are many, many angels. In fact, it is fair to say that there are many, many more angels than there are humans. So first, imagine that there are however many, seven billion, what numbers humanity calls upon itself on the earth now, and all of the other beings that are not incarnate upon the earth now. And so there is at least, at least, sweets, twelve angels at least for every being that is in any way associated with the earth in any dimension, in any density, with any understanding of itself, conscious or unconscious, alive and in body or not, begin then to fathom just how many angelic beings there are. How many stars could you number in the sky? How could you count them? If you can count to infinity, you would then count to how many angels there are associated with the earth as well. Angelic beings, then, is not the same as to say an individual entity. You see, you think of your individualness as well, and you think, I am one, one being. But you, in a greater understanding of yourself, are also a multiplicity. You are also an advanced being of which only one part that you call you is manifest physically with a body, with one body. So if you can think of your body and all of the cells and all of the molecules and all of the atoms associated with the one body, that is how angelic beings come together as well. So one angelic being consists of a great deal of luminosity, a great deal of light, not simply one angelic being, as in one individual. So an angel is a luminous expression of individualized momentary light. So if you were to have an encounter with one angel, that particular being would manifest for you as a representation of an individual because that is what you would call upon. You would call upon your counterpart in light or an expression of being as your mind tells you that life is organized. Your beliefs tell you that life is organized one being at a time, one assignment or one purpose at a time, and so that is how you would imagine the angelic kingdom to be as well. Angels, then, are not divided into different kingdoms as humanity understands it. However, perhaps you have heard reference, then, to the hierarchy of angels. The hierarchy of angels, then, is an understanding of how luminosity expresses itself. Luminosity is light emanation, emanations of light, and some hold an emanation a little bit longer than others. And so there are bursts of angelic light, just as you would imagine of sunlight bursts from the sun. And there is longer lasting expressions of light as it is carried upon waves of energy as well. And so luminous beings such as angels and not exclusive to angels are able to express themselves as a variety of forms of light. Understand then that just as you see that moonlight appears to be different than sunlight although both are light from the sun itself, it is as well the same with angels. They are luminous expressions of light, expressions of the one creator of the one truth of oneness itself. However, because of the densities and the waves of energy, their beingness 
moves and shifts that luminosity which appears to give them shape. It appears to give them purpose. You see, you also then are perfect expressions of the oneness and of the Creator. But because you have arranged yourself in a human body, you have given yourself purpose in some way associated with humanness or a human life stream or time frame, a lifeline. Angels then, being your counterparts, have the same, at least as far as it appears. Please become comfortable with the idea that the appearance of something is not exactly the same as the something. The appearance of light is not the same as light. The appearance of you being an individual body, being with an individual purpose, or the roles that you play in this life, these are expressions of your being. They are illusions, expressions, creations of your being and angels do or have the same abilities. And so according to how light gathers about them, is dispersed or used by them, creates the appearance of a hierarchy. In this case, a hierarchy is not more than, less than or better in any way than another. However, there are expressions of luminosity that are more dense or slower than others. And these particular beings are the ones noticed by humanity that much more. Best put, they are simply closer, appear to be closer to the earth, appear to be closer to humanity than other beings. They are closer to you in density, and so they appear to be nearer to you. For humanity, that translates as caring. So humanity thinks or believes that there are some angels that care for humanity more than others. It believes that there are some angels that are assigned to one humanity or to one task or another more than other angels, more than other hierarchies. That, again, is not entirely true. However, it is considered entirely appropriate as humanity arrives at the decisions that it does, the beliefs that it does. It is completely understandable how humanity has arrived at these decisions. When humanity, when individuals have seen or had a direct experience with an angel, that apparition, that appearance of an angel has dressed itself in sufficient luminosity but dense luminosity as to appear radiant as light. Higher light is luminosity, lower light or light that can be visible to the human range, even the greater spectrum, it is a radiance, you see? And so humanity has had many encounters with radiant beings of light. And these have then appeared to be so bright, so perfect, so light. And that is why you see perhaps that they have been depicted with wings and they have been depicted in some ways, at least biblically speaking, with halos. And so the feathers depicting a lightness of being, or that they barely touched the ground, or in fact did not need to touch it at all. And so the beings that describe their encounters with a luminous or radiant being, and said, look, they did not even touch the ground, they did not have feet with which to touch the ground. And that is why they have been depicted then with wings. For in human terms, only a bird could stay aloft in such a way without needing to touch the ground. Luminosity as it gathers then appears to gather in the forehead 
area. Now, the appearance of this is because radiant and luminous beings, as they have communicated with humanity, have done so telepathically. They have rarely needed to speak or to conduct themselves in a language, for there is truly no need for this. They can touch you with a thought. It is a very gentle thought. It would not probe your thoughts or shift your beliefs. It would touch you ever so lightly in the area predominantly of the third eye. And so when individuals have felt touched in this particular area and they have also then sent their thoughts or returned a thought or an expression of love to this third eye center, that luminous light in that area has grown. It has appeared to grow or to emanate from there. Luminosity appears then to be greater there. And so humanity has dressed that or described it as a halo. All things in essence have halos. For instance, you are able to see the rings around Saturn. You might call this a halo. At times your moon appears to also have a ring around it and there are certain scientific principles of physics that would describe why that is so. But in gentle layman's terms, it could be described as a halo. Likewise, then, there are certain beings that in their ways to communicate with you can dress themselves in certain rings of light in order to communicate or to dress themselves or to share, to communicate with you in certain ways. The appearance, then, of an angel can be many different things. Again, it can appear to be human or human-like, although this is rare. It can appear to be as a being from another world, and this is more common than you may think, because it is a way to dress oneself in a body as well. What is the purpose of angels, then? Well, an angelic being has the purpose, which is to preserve light or preserve life. Earlier, I have said to you that angels have always been, and in fact have been created from the very, very beginning. What you would think of as the beginning had luminosities, intelligences, compassions of light, compact compassions of eternal light and life. That is what a luminous being or an angel is. And as these have always been, their light has also always been. Do other worlds besides the earth also have angels? Yes. However, remember that earlier we said that it is the dimension and the density of light and its variety of expressions that makes for what an angel is or its purpose or its look. So an angelic being, as it relates to another world or another planet, may look completely different to you, feel different, have a different light emanation and a complete different purpose that is more akin or alike that other world. Where the earth is concerned, for the most part, angels preserve life. They preserve life by allowing or creating places for light to enter. In essence, we could say that the more shadow there is, the more angelic presence is there. Now, angels do not necessarily bring or infuse light. Remember that I have said that their purpose is more associated with preserving life or preserving light. And so while they may not bring light, they would make certain that the light is not extinguished. You see the difference. And so for the most part, the purpose associated with this present now density 
is to preserve those things that are precious and necessary about life itself. This can be individually expressed. It can be expressed as a group. It can be expressed as a whole. And so angels gather to conclaves, if you like. You may think of them even as meeting or meeting places or conferences. An angelic conclave would be where there is a need, a necessity to preserve light or life. They preserve life in the moment. It is not that they package it and save it for the future, making certain that it has a long shelf life. Not like that. They preserve the instrument of life. You see, there is frequencies that are associated with life that are most necessary. You think about the earth and you understand that there are certain biologies that are necessary for life on earth to express. I tell you that before that is even possible or necessary, that there are unique frequencies of both light and sound that are necessary in order for life to want to exist or to have purpose. In order for creation to exist, it must be creative. Creativity must exist before creation can come forward or better put, simultaneous. This is what angels preserve. They preserve creativity, they preserve creation, they preserve perfections of light and sound, harmonies. You see, it is for this reason that, again, that many times you see angelic beings associated with certain instruments, be they bugles or harps or like that. They preserve frequencies, they preserve light. They are light bringers, they are light keepers. At times, you will see that they have also been depicted with swords or like that. This, again, is the very same imagery. They are there to defend or to preserve light. They are there to keep light. They are keepers of life and light. And so their perfection is what allows them to do that. And so, in essence, what they are allows them to be what they do. So what does an angel do? Well, it is not the same as having a task or a job. In essence, what they are and what they do is very similar. They preserve life by being what they are. What are they? They are emanations of pure or perfected or whole light. Now, Assume that an angel then touches a human being that is ill and that touching of that being creates a healing so that the human is now perfect in the moment again or restored in health. What happened? What did that? Well, a perfect or pure essence then whose job it is to preserve or perfect life, touched something that temporarily thought of itself or expressed itself as an imperfection. In essence, the only thing that the angel touched was the belief associated with imperfection or with illness. Once that thought was touched or merged with wholeness, with luminosity, with whole light, that touching then changed or erased the imperfection, changed it into perfection, so that the cells, the molecules, and like that, recognized themselves as perfect and whole again, and reversed the process. This is what you term a healing. A healing then is a reversal in the thought or the belief of imperfection depending upon how dense or how deep that thought is, that is what depends upon whether a true or a complete healing can take place. For instance, if a healing does take place 
and then the thought returns later, I am so glad that I am better, I hope the illness doesn't come back. Well, that is not whole any longer. The thought is no longer whole. That thought no longer says, I am perfect as I am, and I am the expression of wholeness and perfection, as I have been touched by pure light. You see? And so, in ignorance, not in wanting illness, but in ignorance of not understanding luminosity or perfection or perfect thought, the human part of your being reduces then back to density, to the dense thoughts that it is accustomed to. That is why some healings do not last or cannot take or cannot last ever lasting. Why it seems that you feel better only for a little bit, only for a little while, or whether this cancer is in remission but not for good. You see? So each being then has the responsibility of raising their consciousness, their light, their purity. So even if a being were to draw an angelic presence to themselves and say, heal me, heal that which I am, and receive such a perfection, such a benevolence as that, such a bestowing of light, then it is up to the radiance in that being to raise themselves to the best of their ability to that light. So it would do little good for them to see that an angelic being has come to their rescue or has made them better temporarily or in some way has been the cause of that. Because in many cases, the human being then feels that much more lowered in essence, less in charge of their body or in their being. If the belief is present that they only survive by the light that was given to them rather than by their own light or their own truth, then the light, the health, the wellness is diminished as well. That is why many angelic interventions do not involve a sight or a feeling. At times there is more of a knowing that there is a presence that has joined them. So that together then, if you like, your being and another together in the merging of light, in the unity, the spirit of unity, much more is accomplished than in a true divine intervention. Now, of course, there are unique and specific ideas and instances associated with this. And here we have generalized an entire topic for you, reducing it to a one-sided conversation. But perhaps you will allow that I offer to you just as many details as I understand that you would prefer to have. Now then, can any soul choose to be an angel? No, not entirely. There are many souls that are angelic in their presence, benevolent, compassionate, loving, and in every way appear to be as luminous as angels, but they are not angels. So there are many souls that have gained and expressed themselves in many, many, many ways. Again, just as if they were angels, but an angelic being is a very unique and specific creation. So there are beings, we will call them beautiful beings, that are much like angels, but they do not consider themselves as pure or as perfect as angels. So imagine something that is far and beyond the most beautiful and the most perfect image of luminous light that you could ever imagine and have that luminous light say, Oh no, I am not even close to being an angel, but thank you for the compliment. And so the souls that can become angel-like, that is enough. It is enough praise. You see, they do not aspire to become an angel. 
They do, however, aspire to become angelic in their understanding, in their compassion. Angels, however, are very unique aspects of light. There are packets of luminous light beings in their expression, and this is angelic then. Can humans become angels? Again, I say to you, no. However, humans can become very, very angelic. They can become beings that are as luminous, as vibrant, as perfect as angels. But they would not be an angel, you see? In essence, imagine a twin, something that is so perfect and so exactly like its counterpart. Oh, but it is not that. It is just as beautiful as if it were, but it is not. And so there are souls who aspire to be angels, and they can become angelic and become very much in their purpose as what an angel would or could do for humanity. Enough that you would call them a personal angel, but they would not call themselves that. Perhaps that is one of the few distinctions. And so from your perspective, you may see a variety of luminous beings and call them all angels. They would appear very much so to you. You would swear upon it. But they would understand the subtle distinctions that make them unique, just as you understand all of the subtleties that make you unique as well. Now, the job of an angel, as we have said, is more its purpose. It is the understanding of what it is that causes it to do what it does. So an angel does not exactly have a task to attend to or a certain way to spend the hours in a day or in a life. It is what they are that allows them to become cause. You see, you yet live in a world of thought that involves cause and effect. First this, then that. If this happens, then that will happen. If I need help, they will come. And so in a world of cause and effect, it is well to think of a job or how a purpose would express itself. But those beings who are angels are always angels. They are always being angels. So what they are and what they do is the same. And that being is always active. It is active light. It is luminosity always expressing itself. It is perfection seeking to be more perfect. How does perfection become more perfect? Well, by discovering anything that is less than perfection and perfecting it so that it becomes more perfect. That is how humanity is benefited by angels because angels are upon the earth to preserve life. Why? Because life is perfect. Because the purpose of life is life itself. Because light exists in order to become perfect light. Because radiance and luminosity are perfect as they are, perfect expressions of one and of unity. And so the purpose of an angel then is to express that radiance and that luminosity in as many different ways and places as possible, making that which is perfect more perfect. If you believe that you are only going to draw an angel to you, if you are in a miserable situation and need a great deal of help, that is not entirely true at all. You could be in a perfect, giddy state of joy or happiness and draw light to you. Because a giddy state of joy, well, if that could be preserved, if that could be bottled and sold, what would that be worth? How many bars of gold could joy or happiness be worth if it could be preserved and distributed to others? 
So angelic beings are also very near to that preciousness. Why are angelic beings also associated as being near babes, as young ones? Well, they are also associated with being new, with being pure. Not simply because they are helpless. It is because they are courageous. Courageous incarnations of perfect light. They are beginning expressions of light. And so that is another way to preserve life. You see, life is not entirely fragile. It can be quite strong. The bonds of love can be quite strong and they can also be strengthened. And so an angelic presence can be detected where there are bonds that can be strengthened for they also then lead to seamless unity. And so here again you have angelic presence. They are here upon the earth in what you would term here. Better put they are now. Rather than to say they are here, it is better put to say they are now, meaning that they are present in the moment. So they are not here upon the physical earth. They are present in the now moment, in the expression of life in the moment. Regardless of where life is, or how dense it is, they are present in that expression throughout the density. You see, light or the sun's light is present throughout the day, even if it is not here for you to touch it. So you cannot always touch light, but you can receive its benefits. You receive its warmth when you interact with it here and now, when you are present with it. So the more present you are in your life, the more present you are in your moment, the more of a relationship that you have with self or with the moment, the more that you will have the experience of also being joined by that luminosity. It is one of the reasons why presence is being associated with joy, if you like, or enlightenment. Enlightenment is the ability to be present with light. It is the ability to join with light in such a way as one dresses oneself with joy and wisdom and knowledge and all things both dissolve and become or come into being. You come into natural beingness as you come into light and more than likely there is the luminosity or the presence of an angel that has come to assist this as well. Now that you understand that they come, whether or not there is despair or there is joy, how is it that the angels come when there is despair or difficulty, sickness or illness or fear? Can you call upon an angel, an angelic presence, at that moment, yes. Again, it is most important where possible to dissolve what is present in favor of something else that is more whole. Sometimes when there is a great deal of fear, it is almost as if the human being can jump out of its body, out of its skin, temporarily. Well, if the essential part of you had enough fear to jump out of the body, it would, in essence, in that moment, merge with the angelic being or luminosity. That fear, in essence, finding its opposite or its complement, would almost instantly find a being or a presence there. That is emerging or also a divine encounter if you like and many different expressions of these have certainly been told in your time. So fear is one of the ways to encounter such a being although it is not one that I would suggest as you might imagine and simply because one has great fear does not mean that they will have that encounter or be aware of it or they may have the encounter and not be aware of it. They may be joined by a light, 
a presence, a truth, a knowing, or even a wisdom of what to do next that may be guided by an angelic being. And so all of these are possibilities of what they do because of what they are. Every being is associated with at least 12 angelic beings, at least 12 personal angels, not individuals, but angels, are associated with your life. Now, that is the best way to put it. They are associated with your life, and so you believe that they are associated with you. So they are not as much associated with your personality as they are associated with you, what you are, what your life is about. So they are associated with your purpose. They are guidance for your purpose, for your understanding about life, for your expression of life and truth. So luminous light expresses or assists what you are in perfecting your life. The purpose of this is so that you will not need to express this life again because it will become a perfect expression of what you are so that you also will become angelic meaning that what you are and what you do becomes one that becomes purposeful you have heard these terms and this understanding before but it does not quite sink in because the human being is a doing kind of race at this time long and buried deep into your psyche is that you must do something to make your life useful you must work you see it is a worker being that humanity has been created so deep in your understanding you think of yourselves as doing beings as working beings and that your purpose or your life stream comes from that after all that is how you get food on the table you work and the food is then paid for there will come a time when this association will be long ago and far away and you will have other understandings of what it means to be a human being or an illumined being an illuminated being then you will still be of a human variety but you will see that you will become much less dense in your thoughts and so your bodies will be arranged much less or lighter in that case you will also have relationships with angels or angelic beings and perhaps see them in a slightly different way if you wish to invoke angels well you become a little bit like them or you become their opposite in some way you come full circle you see there are many different ways to call or to draw an angel one way is to think of yourself as a complete sphere to make yourself your beingness perfect and spherical and imagine yourself the smaller part the human self as much much smaller and a luminosity around you surrounding you that is much much greater than that and then imagine that a luminous being that is much like you merges with you so that the human part of you receives its benefit or its light its truth its wisdom its understanding its answer its guidance what it will be it works a little bit the opposite of what you might think you see the difficulty is that many beings when they do encounter an angel oh how they would want to cling to it and so would you an angelic encounter an angel all to yourself that you have summoned that has come calling you would think it is almost like a genie that has come to grant all of your wishes and tell you all about life but the moment that you touch or cling to that it is no longer a pure moment it is no longer a simple moment a moment of pure unity where they can impart all that they are 
And so in that moment, the human part of you takes over. Oh, please help me with this or through that, which is understandable and is understandable by the angelic being as well, which is one of the reasons why they send telepathic messages or communiques or simply an altered nature to your being so that it will seem as if you entirely alone have accomplished great feats, which is entirely possible. So if you wish to have an encounter with an angelic being, you will make yourself as much a part of nature and as whole as possible. Which is not to say that you are disinterested at all and you would take it all in stride. Oh no, it is very important to see and to become part of the magic of the moment, for it will appear to be just that. But then that is the most important part. Become one with the moment. Merge with the moment. Merge with the higher truth. You will see that your questions will still be answered. Your desires will still be fulfilled to the best of your ability. And all else that can come from such an encounter will indeed be fulfilled. Notice that I have said to the best of your ability. So when a wish, a desire or a need is fulfilled by an angel, that is exactly what they do. They fill you, your essence, your vessel with as much luminosity, as much light, as much truth or wisdom or healing or what you would term it, for it is all the same to them. They fill your vessel, your grail, your cup, your essential self with as much luminosity as you will allow so that you can then feel whole, complete, a unified field of the all and there remember and thereby beget or do those things of great value. That is how an angel best fulfills its task. Now, depending upon the human being, for each one is indeed unique in that way, there are some that use the luminosity all in one moment, as if they were to drink it all in one gulp. There are those that will use it just a little bit at a time, as if it was far too precious for them. In other words, if they do not feel as if they are deserving of that light or that truth, it will not penetrate. And so angelic beings are powerful forces of nature, of light, preservers of life itself. But they must meet their match in that. And so for those that cling to illness or to a truth when a truth is meant to be shared or to light when it is meant to make more than one whole or like that, that is something that an angel cannot do. An angel, in essence, could not pour its light upon you and say, share that with 12 other individuals. But if you were to share it with 12 other individuals, more would be bestowed upon you. But you see, it is not their job to teach you a lesson. They are preservers of light and life. They are not teachers of lessons. However, humanity in its wisdom can learn many different lessons from an angel. Now, perhaps you will record that biblical expressions or prophecies have been recorded as retold by angels or luminous beings. What have they done then? They have preserved life as best they could by giving information, guidance, wisdom for those of human life then to use in order to change their own course of events. You see? And so the angel did not say, I will do this or that for you. So this or that does come to pass or does not. 
they have said, Behold, look upon this vision as I tell it, that you will know it, and thereby know how to best serve it. You see? And so again, they are teachers or bestowers of life. What they are and what they do is the same. Now there are those that have said that there have been many more angelic sightings as it would be during your biblical past or that they have been much more recorded in the past than they are today. Well, it is somewhat so that during lighter times it is easier to see a manifestation of light. During less educated times, it is also then easier to see a light and to call a light an angel or a luminous being an angel. Or it is perhaps best put that it is a little frightening as well to encounter a being from another world that also would appear to be a bit more advanced or luminous than a human and to say, that is also an angel. So many of the encounters that have been noted in your biblical past were not angels at all. However, they were luminous and interested beings, those also willing and wishing to be assistants. They are visionaries just beyond this dimension, not meaning to influence time or history however to make available truths now perhaps all associated with the bible and its writings and other books of luminosity and wisdom is another subject that we could take up upon another time do angels incarnate upon the earth no there would be no reason for them to do so there are beings upon the earth who have had relatively few lifetimes and where their memories are much more associated with the in-between lives or the lighter patterns or those, as I have said, who are luminous beings and souls so light in their essence, so light in their compassion. They are as if angelic in origin so that it would appear to be so upon the earth. Yes, these are those that you call angels come to earth. And it is appropriate. You see, it is not a misnomer. It is appropriate to say there are angels walking upon the earth today. Not only are the luminous beings among you and around you, within you and about you all of the time, but there are many beings ancient souls and new ones alike, innocent and pure, perfect and whole, and certainly less than dense where humanity is concerned. There are those whose hands are not tainted. There are those who have never taken a life. And it would surprise you to know that these are few and far between, particularly now at the age at the end of an age upon the earth. Imagine that, that among all of the seven billions of humans, that there are very, very few who it could be said about them have never taken the life of another in any other life. Few individuals can call claim to this then. And so their claim is yours as well, for you have them to interact with, to be with, to be near and excited with and for. And perhaps in another age, you may then claim the same and for yourself as well. Now, what is a guardian angel associated with? Well, remember that we have said that you are surrounded by a great many angels. Some of these have guardianship over your light. What 
means this. Well, guardianship means not what you may think that nothing will befall you that you would not care for. A guardian angel makes certain that your light cannot fall beneath, below a certain level. In other words, all that you have achieved, life before life, life before this one, in between lives, has given you a certain frequency, a certain light, a certain luminosity of your own. And so guardian angels do their utmost to make certain that life, your purpose as it is presented to you or as you present it to yourself, depending upon your consciousness, they make certain that your own light does not fall, that you do not experience a fall in life. This does not mean that difficult moments will not befall you in this life or that you will not encounter difficulties. See, it is not that. It is not simply a human difficulty. The question here is that your true essence, your essential self, your luminosity, it is important that it not fall beneath the quotient by which you began this life and that in fact all that can be done to raise light, frequency, consciousness, what you like. And so the guardian angels surround you, in essence, with a force, a force field that makes your essence stronger, if you like, gives you courage, gives you protection. And so a guardian angel protects you, not from negativity, not from difficult situations. It preserves, again, preserves the light that you are, that you have, and does what it is or does in order to preserve or extend that life or that light so that you will not only assist yourself but others. Remember that angels then, even if they are assigned to you in appearance, that they are here to preserve life. And so they can, in certain instances, use you as an instrument to preserve light. And so if another cannot hear or will not see, perhaps an angel will use you to convey or connect a certain message in human terms, you see, and that also assists in preserving life. So all beings have guardian angels, yes, but remember now they are here to protect your life to a degree, to the degree that your life can be enhanced by your light. And so the more that it is possible for you to gain or expand light or life, the more that you will feel or have their presence near you. If there are certain beings who have no idea or interest in expanding or preserving their life, does their guardian angel still serve them? Yes, because it is what they are. When they preserve your life, they are preserving life for all. If they are preserving life of one who does not care whether they live or die or how it will be, in that preservation, in that moment, they are also preserving and extending life on earth for the present moment, for the future moment, and like that. Now, a fine question is, how do angels, or in fact do angels, relate to humanity in a different way now or today than they did at one time? Well, both no and yes. No. An angel is an angel is an angel is a luminous being is a radiance and has always been created since the beginning of time without exception. What is different now? Well, the density of the earth is different. Thereby humanity's expression upon the earth is different. The dimension, the transition between dimensions is different now. Humanity's desires or what it knows about itself, seeks about itself, is different. So are angels different now than they were? 
No. Do they relate to humanity differently? No. Does humanity relate to angels differently? Yes. So there is indeed a unique difference. However, that difference comes from what humanity is, discovers about itself, believes, discards, attracts. That attracts a different quality, a different luminescence from the angelic realm and makes the encounters unique and different. The kind of emergency moment that you may consider capable or incapable of dealing with makes an encounter with an angel unique and different. How much self you believe you are, whether you believe you are a what or a who, whether you relate to humanity or the wholeness, unique or different, all of this gathers light about you differently and also then attracts angels in a different way. So yes, what you know about angels now is unique to the now time and to your historic perspective to the degree that it has been believed or accepted, to the degree that you take it on faith or take it on belief or to the degree that you demand proof before believing in any such thing determines how much or how many or the quality of encounters that you have. So it is humanity's shifting awareness. It may surprise you that in the short run, as you begin to have encounters with beings from other worlds, that the more encounters with beings from other worlds you have, the more encounters with angels you will have. You see, you will simply have more possibilities near you light and its variety of expressions as it becomes more acceptable to you it will also become more accessible to you so indeed sweet it is very important for you to begin to recognize the possibility the probability and the encounters that are there and near you as well now a final question before we were to close then. If you ask for angelic assistance, do you automatically receive it? Yes. Yes. Light calling upon light always receives light. You see? Now imagine that you strike a match and you light a candle. Does the candle always light the first time? Not always even if everything is in the right place. You have a very good match, it is dry. You strike it the same as you have always. You have a very sturdy candle. There is no breeze. The wick is also strong and well presented. The candle should light, yes? But sometimes it does not light on the first try. And so with angels, you do not always feel their presence in the first moment's light. However, when you call upon an angel being simply for the call, simply to merge with light, simply because light begets light before it decides to challenge that light. You see, think of your humanness. You would call upon an angel and the moment an angel would present itself to you, one of the first things that a human will do is to challenge it. Prove to me that you are an angel. Prove to me that you are of the light and not the other place. How do I know you are an angel? You see? And so in the challenging of that, the light diminishes in the moment. That is not to say that you cannot draw to yourself that which is less than perfection. But I tell you that if you will call upon an angel truly call upon an angel you will have an interaction with an angel now can you call upon an angel too many times well yes does it mean that the angel will not come no if you call upon an angel an angel will come they have come to preserve light and to preserve life but not always does an angel come to respond to you. 
Understand? You are not in command of the angels. It falls to you to summon them, to commune with them, to interact with them, to invoke on their behalf and on yours. They are not under contract to serve you or to serve your purpose or do your bidding. They are luminous beings, creations of light, perfections, here to reveal to you, to mirror to you, your own perfection as well. And if they are doing that, then there is no need for them to do anything else. So if you were to invoke or summon an angel too many times, they would be near you. They would preserve life and all that you hold precious. But it does not mean that you will have their community or their favor. Because there is, well, responsibility upon your part as well to raise your own light, to raise your own luminosity. And to the degree that they are able to assist you in that, they will. Well, perhaps we have answered a great many questions here. And as the nature of these talks, we have perhaps raised even at least as many questions as has been answered. But we have broached the topic well. Perhaps brought delight to some of the thoughts associated with this subject. It is a delightful one. And it is one that we will speak upon again, at least as it relates to other subjects as well. Perhaps we have piqued your curiosity or your interest, and perhaps even as you take yourselves to the sleep chamber this evening, <laughs> you will allow yourself to be tucked in by the light of the deepest and greatest love and compassion, other than my own. Until the next moment, sweet buns, I bid you good day.